Je remercie d'abord. President, at the outset, Luxembourg would like to thank you for convening this resumed 10th uh, extraordinary emergency session of the General Assembly. Unfortunately, war continues to rage in the Middle East. The risk of a regional escalation is very much real. And yet the Security Council has not yet managed to shoulder its responsibility by adopting a resolution on the situation, and this owing to vetoes cast and divisions within the Council. Against this backdrop, it's important for the General Assembly to address this issue, as well as for all member states who wish to do so to be able to take the floor. Regional peace and security, as well as international peace and security, are at stake. President, as I already said at the Security Council during the high-level public debate convened by Brazil the day before yesterday, nothing can justify the atrocities committed by Hamas terrorists and by Islamic Jihad targeting Israeli civilians on the 7th of October. Nothing can justify these barbaric acts which shook the world. We condemn them in the strongest possible terms, just as the United Nations Secretary General did earlier. Luxembourg would like to unequivocally reaffirm Israel's right to defend itself within the framework of international law. Having said that, I would like to refer to what President Biden said. He called on Israel not to be guided by rage, recalling that the United States committed errors when responding to the September 11th terrorist attacks. Israel must act in keeping with international humanitarian law and must also ensure the protection of civilians. The people of Gaza are not Hamas. It should not, they should not be held responsible for crimes committed by terrorists. The people of Gaza should not be subjected to collective punishments. The UN Secretary General called for a de-escalation and for a humanitarian ceasefire. To begin with, humanitarian pauses should be established. These pauses could eventually lead to a ceasefire. This would allow for the delivery of emergency humanitarian assistance. It would also facilitate the immediate and unconditional release of hostages, and it would also help to ensure the safety of uh, the civilian population in Gaza. This would save lives. Too many lives, too many civilian lives have already been lost. Rapid and unfettered humanitarian access must be re-established without delay. We welcome the first deliveries of humanitarian assistance to the people living in the Gaza Strip over the last few days. We thank the Secretary General, Egypt and the United States for facilitating the secure passage of uh, these goods. Nonetheless, the people of Gaza need lasting humanitarian assistance, humanitarian assistance which would cover all the people in need. To date, emergency deliveries of assistance excluded fuel, and yet fuel is absolutely vital for hospitals to operate as well as for the desalination of water. United Nations facilities and all hospitals, clinics, schools, all humanitarian personnel, none of the above, none of them should ever be targeted by parties to a conflict. UNRWA which is currently providing shelter to 600,000 people in the Gaza Strip, as well as other humanitarian agencies in the field, urgently need to receive urgent support so as to discharge their mandate. As for Luxembourg, we've decided to contribute 2.5 million euros, an additional 2.5 million euros to humanitarian efforts in Gaza and in the region, in particular supporting UNRWA, the World Food Programme, the International Committee of the Red Cross, and uh, the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, OCHA. This emergency assistance will bring our total support to roughly 12 million euros. That's for the year 2023. The conflict, which began on the 7th of October, has resulted in over 6,000 lives lost in Israel and in o the occupied Palestinian territory. Hundreds of children have been killed. 38 UNRWA personnel have also lost their lives. I'd like to pay tribute to the heroic work being undertaken by all humanitarian actors out in the field. They're braving every danger to tend to civilians affected by this conflict. In particular, I'd like to pay tribute to the ICRC. Its teams in Gaza are working in particularly testing conditions. I draw in the ICRC's call for the upholding of international humanitarian law by all parties. 
President, I visited, uh, I've visited Gaza on a number of occasions since uh, I became minister in 2004. For years now, Gaza has been an open-air prison. The living conditions there are extreme. Civilians in Gaza are suffering doubly. First of all, from the Israeli blockade, but also the bombing, and also because Hamas is using them as human shields. There is a serious risk of this conflict being transformed into a regional inferno. And this applies also to the West Bank, where we've seen an increase in settler violence and the forced transfer of Palestinian communities. Both of these have reached alarming levels. We must absolutely avoid any spillover of this conflict. In order to do this, we must work, um, the international community must work in conflict and with all may, the main actors in the region. The international community must urgently restart the Middle Eastern peace process and pay it the attention it deserves. The Day for Peace in the Middle East initiative, which was held here in New York in September, can be viewed as a first step in this direction. Luxembourg remains con committed to a peaceful resolution of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, which would uphold Israel's right to security, all the while also respecting Palestinians' right to self-determination and to dignity. A just, lasting and comprehensive peace based on the two-state solution within the 1967 borders, with two democratic states living side by side and maintaining the status quo in the holy sites in Jerusalem. This is the only viable path to breaking the cycle of violence. President, this is the path we must commit ourselves to in the name of our common humanity, the humanity which we share with Israelis and Palestinians, with Palestinians and Israelis. Thank you. This has been the Nod News Network, transmission complete.